What do you mean to be continued? That's it. All right. We're jumping over to Osawa's story then. <laughs> no, it's not going to be okay. I'm angry. Angry. Okay, Osawa, we're back to you. Eight hour stream. Eight hour stream. No. I need to eat today. I haven't eaten yet and it's 5 p.m. So I was phone ringing. Minorikawa's phone number popped up on the LCD display. The reporter must have finished looking into the matter Osawa had asked about. The exact same thing happened to me when playing Virtue's Last Reward. Ah, dang it, dang it, Rampa slash Nonary slash Shibuya. Spike Chunsoft can't do this to us. This just can't do this to us. Osawa's phone. Okay, uh, the reporter must have finished looking into the matter Osawa had asked. Mr. Osawa, sorry to keep you. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting. How'd it go? Well, I looked into the background of that story you asked about, and I learned who it uh, was your wife was dating. Who was it? Osawa asked immediately. There was a brief pause. Mamoru Tanaka. I see. Finally had proof positive of a relationship between I and Tanaka. Now, more than ever, it was no time to waver. No matter how painful the reality was, it was also true that if they hadn't been dating, there probably would be no way of saving Maria. So, Minoruka said, What was this big thing about disrupting the power balance of the world all about? There's something I need to take care of on my end first. Once I'm finished, I'll tell you everything. Yeah, that's fine. Things are pretty hectic on my end right now anyway. So I would expect Minorikawa to put up more of a fight. He figured a reporter for four-star general gossip would be a bit more persistent. Of course it's to be continued. There's still the final dungeon. First time I played Persona 5, the game ended several hours, I thought. I was just about to beat it. Yeah, Persona 5 has like two endings. And that's just the regular Persona. Then you get into Royal and you get another semester and you're like, Oh my god! Anyway. Oh, by the way, there was one other thing I wanted to tell you, Mr. Osawa. Uh, Osawa could practically sense the finger pointing his way from the other end of the line. Don't be too angry with your wife. All too often in this world, people let their anger get in the way of solving their problems. You may have a point. Osawa let out a right chuckle. Alright, then I'll call you back later. Hey, Osawa, Minasan is having a tough time. Help him out, buddy. Sawa found Ai standing by herself in the yard. She kept her back to him as he approached. May I have a moment? He asked quietly. What? Still, she didn't bother to turn around. What you're saying is to never play a Persona game, got it. No, I'm saying never play a Persona game if you have a small amount of time. <laughs> There's something important I need to talk to you about. I'm not in the mood right now. Please, I... I realize you're upset about Tanaka's death, but... The mention of Tanaka's name, I slowly shook her head. Don't... Just tell me what you want. Hurry up and get to the point. Sawa tried to move closer to her, but she pointedly kept her distance. There's no time to mince words. Did Tanaka give you his password? There was something Osawa needed to hear. Nope, we're going into this. There's something Osawa needed to hear for himself before this went any further. Were you in love with Tanaka? What are you talking about? Sawa frowned. Why did you marry me? He asked. You gotta be kidding. This is the important discussion you wanted to have? Did you ever love me? I let out a joyless chuckle. <laughs> love? I'm amazed to even hear the word leave your lips. There was a note of challenge in her voice. Let me ask you the same question. Did you ever love me? To be honest, I married you because I thought my daughters needed a mother. Wow. I let out a weary sigh as some of the combat of tension left her shoulders. That really is honest, she said. So I guess I should be honest too. I married you because my father asked me to. He wanted to chain you down so you didn't leave for some other company. And you were okay with marrying someone for something just like that? For something like that? You really have no idea how much you're worth, do you? The value of one woman's life versus the potential profits your research would bring in? There's no comparing the two. If it meant that Okoshi Pharmaceutical could monopolize your talents, then what did it matter what I wanted for myself? There was something akin to desperation in I's words. And so you sent me those threatening emails too? What? I looked at him in shock, he knew he'd guessed correctly. So her name is I, and she signed all of the, the things as A. Come on. 
<laughs> it's half her name. You would go that far just to keep me tied to your father's business? That's right, I would. I bit down on her lip hard. But what would you even know about how I feel? I'm sorry, don't apologize. I shook her head vehemently. I'm not the victim here. You say that, but isn't it because of me that you and Tanaka weren't able to stay together? I began to tremble. Her secret was out. When did you figure it out? She asked. Earlier today, that tie clip. Heh, <laughs> right. Not the sort of gift one gives to one's husband's co-worker, is it? Even if it was a listening device. My smile was bitter with self-deprecation. Sao couldn't help but pity her. Even Tanaka must have suspected that she placed the company's profit above all else if she'd go to such lengths to protect its interests. It was like she'd given up her entire life just for that. Well, she said, aren't you angry? Asawa just shook his head. Could you tell me one more thing, though? He asked. Did Tanaka ever tell you what his lab password was? His password? I needed to get the Antivara out of the lab. I flinched at the suggestion. To get it out? What are you thinking? That belongs to the company. I just need one dose to save Maria. Please. If you know, please tell me. I don't know it. Ai's voice was barely a whisper. Asawa looked, as, looked his wife right in the eye. You're telling the truth. I am. I see. Then, do you have any idea what number he might have used for a password? I shook her head silently and turned her back to her husband once more. Maybe it's I's birthday. Cough, cough. Tanaka hadn't given I his password. Saw his last chance had gone up in smoke. He let a long, shaky breath and shut his eyes tight. Was it true? Was there nothing more he could do? I'm just telling you, whenever there's a love triangle like this, it's always the person's birthday. What do you mean, giving us another key bout? How dare you? Uh, alright, where were we? Still can't do anything with Maria over here. Oh, have we not looked into Aji's thing? I guess we haven't looked into Aji's thing. Okay. Fine. To Endo Electronics. Right, 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 because we were over here. We need to see the... from this side of things. This is the game that keeps on gaming! Achi told Stanley and Atomi what his father had done. As she listened, Atomi hung her head. Her face was sallow. I'm so sorry, Achi told her. I'm not really sure what to say. He clenched his fist so hard his knuckles popped. Struggling to keep his emotions in check. So if I were rendered brain dead, you could help your sister? Don't. A state where brain function has ceased irreversibly. In Japan, there are two conditions for declaring breath death. I think you uh, misspelled something there, game. The first is that the patient must be comatose and in a state of apnea, no longer breathing due to damage to the brain. The second is that the root cause is diagnosed and is deemed that no reasonable treatment will restore brain function, which is why Tanaka was suggesting, or uh, Daisuke Endo was suggesting to Tanaka to shoot her in the head, because that's not really something that you can treat well. Stop! Achi said quickly. Please, don't say things like that. A sad look came to Tomi's face and she pressed her hand to her heart. Breath of Death 7 is a, is a video game that I let's played many years ago. I mean, to find out like this... She turned to Achi, tears glistening in her eyes. I want to help your sister, but... We have other things to worry about right now. It's time with Stanley to cut her off. Remember, Alfred is after you, Atomi. Isn't that what Kanan told you? Yeah, she said I was the mastermind's target. Atomi wiped her tears away with her fingertips. So, Alfred and Achi's father are after the same thing, Stanley said. Is that just a coincidence? I mean, there's no way that uh, Dice Gando is, uh, is Alfred. That's, that would be weird. 
Didn't sound like he thought so. Hold up, Achi growled, leaning in from the back seat. Yeah, my dad's way out of line, but he did what he did for Suzuni. He wouldn't work with terrorists. Yeah? Well, I'm not saying he's deliberately aiding terrorists, Stanley replied coolly. It's common sense that a pro wouldn't get an amateur involved with their plans. It makes it too likely that a clumsy misstep will cause things to fall apart. But then again, that's not the way Alfred thinks. So actually, the likelihood of failure would be part of the plan. Achi thought back to what Kanan had said earlier. You know, it, it's like they always say, if there's a, an element of it having a possibility of failure, then that makes the despair all the more uh, powerful. <clears throat> Achi thought back to what Kanan had said earlier. If you achieve your goals using accidental means, the outline becomes blurred and it makes it harder for anyone outside looking in to grasp what the actual plan is. Not only have they put together a perfect plan, they've purposely left certain tiny holes in it. So, if we assume the plan has failed, this slip-up might be exactly what Alfred wants, Stanley muttered. Sort of a intentional hole, sort of a intentional hole then, Achi said. Stanley snorted. Kanan told you guys that too, huh? If that's the case, then you really are a fool. What do you just call- what did you just call me? Achi barked. If you know no long how formidable this opponent is, you should you should have given given Hitomi over to the police custody right away. It's only a matter of dumb luck that either of you are still alive right now. Look, lucky or not, luck or not, me and Hitomi have managed to get by safely. That's all that matters. Uh, what exactly is the relationship between you two anyway? Are you guys dating? Achi and Tommy changed glances. When Tommy hesitated uneasily, Achi decided he better speak up. No, it's not like that. We just happened to run into each other earlier today. Guess I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon someone in trouble. Can't abandon someone in trouble, huh? You sure you're not just trying to make yourself feel self-important? There are plenty of people out there you can't see who are also in trouble who are also suffering. If you only help the ones close to hand, then what's the point, really? The world's a lot bigger than you can imagine. There's a lot you're blind to. So what? If I see someone who's in trouble, I'm supposed to just ignore them? Nah, I can't do that. If I see someone who's collapsed from hunger, I'm not just gonna walk on by because there are people starving somewhere else in the world. And be all, hey, let me treat you to a beef bowl or whatever. You can have come up with a smarter example. Stanley replied with a tiny laugh. Okay, so I'm an idiot. Hachi scowled. My bad. Stanley laughed again. Today's been an interesting day, he said. I was with another fellow earlier who was just like you. Meaning, uh, meaning what? He was an idiot too? Yeah, he was an idiot. Do all you Japanese have that problem? Hardly. My little sister's so smart she'd make your eyes pop out. Well, I'm sure relieved to hear that. If anyone, everyone in this country were as dumb as you guys, I might actually start to like this place. <laughs> huh? What does that even mean? Talk so I can understand, man. Achi shot back. Stanley didn't respond. Instead, he stuck his head out the car window, peering at the road ahead. <laughs> they are close to Shibuya Station now, and the traffic had ground to a halt. Pink gridlock again? Stanley grumbled. It's probably better to walk the rest of the way to end electronics. He pulled over to the side of the road. Specifically, the shoulder runs along either side of the traveled portion of the roadway, a place where trash tossed out the windows of moving cars tends to accumulate. Uh, tossing cigarette butts and empty cans out onto the street can potentially hurt people, and it definitely makes a mess. Please, don't litter. This is a message to all you watching. Don't litter! Achi got out of the car, feeling his guts not up with worry. I'm walking here! 
Pretty soon he was gonna have to confront his father. Stanley gave Achi a look. Are you scared about meeting with your father? I'm not scared. First things first, I'm gonna punch him right in the face. Then we can have ourselves a chat. Don't let your emotions get out of control. Your father might be one of the key players in this case. I don't give a damn about that. Achi took Hitomi by the hand and started walking. Stanley, I need to murder you. I don't like you. I'm, I don't know. I'm, unless Stanley decides to betray us at the end, which I'm, I'm really expecting. I'm, I'm starting to, I'm starting to come around to him, or he's starting to come around to us. They got up and down Dogenzaka so many times today already, but this is probably the last time he and Hitomi would make their way up the hill together. <coughs> Yeah, no, well, let's pick up pace. His anger rising, Ashi picked up speed as he marched onward, wanting to confront his father as soon as possible. His father was wrong. Even if he was acting to save Suzuni, he was absolutely wrong. A crime was a crime, regardless of the motive. This is a crime his father needed to atone for. And if he resisted, Ashi would take him down, even if he had to use his fists. Even if I have to use my fists. This is scandalous. Hand holding. A memory from long ago rose in Achi's mind. A pure white karate gi. Thrusting out with his left fist. Daisuke collapsing to the floor. One of the many memories of his father that Achi, uh, Achi could not forget. Kneeling before the memorial altar of his mother, Katone, Achi wept uncontrollably. He clutched his ohajiki tightly in his hands. A toy made of small, coin-shaped glass beads, somewhat similar to marbles. The typical game involves flicking one's pieces into the opponents with a fingertip. Specific rules vary greatly by region. It's kind of like tiddlywinks. Achi had always been rather clingy with his mother. When she was alive, she had often joined him for ohajiki, origami, and the like. On this particular day, Achi had come home miserable after getting bullied by the neighborhood kids for acting like a wimp. Achi. He turned to see his father holding two cups of shaved ice. Come here for a bit. They sat on stairs together eating their sweet frozen confections. You want to get tougher? Daisuke's words were soft and simple. How about you and me get tougher together? Achi looked up his father, frowning in confusion. How are we going to do that? Well, for starters, how about we learn some karate? Karate? Achi's face twisted up unhappily at the idea. He couldn't even imagine himself punching or kicking anyone. It'll be alright, his dad said. I'll go with you, don't you worry. Daisuke flexed one of his scrawny arms. His biceps bulged up the tiniest bit. Nachi was well aware that his father wasn't much of an athlete. There had been an athletics meet in his grade school. Even now, the memory of Daisuke, tri Daisuke tripping clumsily during the parent participation relay was burned into Achi's mind. A type of children's event where parents who have come to watch their children compete, uh, compete are asked to join in with them. Daisuke took part in the tug of war, only to get tangled up in the rope and dragged over the line. Achi was understandably disheartened by his father's embarrassing display, but after eating the lunch his father had made for him, his spirits quickly returned. Daisuke had made rice balls that were clumsily over-salted, but Achi could tell how hard he'd worked to prepare them. I guess, I mean, if you're gonna be there. And so the two began training together at a local karate dojo. Achi put his white gi and fastened his obi tightly. As he did so, he felt as if his feelings were being anchored in place as well. Ichi! Ni! San! Achi's gi sleeves made a whooshing sound as he thrust his fists in time with the sensei's chant. Even simple kata practices made him feel like he was getting stronger somehow. His dad, having left Suzuni in the care of their neighbors, was working up a sweat alongside him. But he was out of shape and his technique was shaky. He was soon exhausted and went to lean up against the dojo wall. Achi stepped out of the training circle and called out to his father. Dad, are you okay? Yeah, I was just gonna... Take a little break. Daisuke sounded like he was on the edge of hyperventilating. Thanks, Dad. Huh? What for? For asking me to come take karate lessons with you. 
Achi was sure he'd never have dared to go to the dojo alone. Hey, just so long as you're liking it. Now go on, get back to training. The deep bow, Achi resumed his kata practice. As they were walking home from the dojo, Achi turned to his father. How come you want to get stronger, Dad? He asked. I mean, you're not getting bullied by your friends. Daisuke was quiet for a few minutes before answering. His words came out awkward and embarrassed. I was picked on a lot when I was your age too, Achi. I had a friend who would always come and bail me out. A friend? Yeah, a friend. A distant look came to his father's eyes. He was a real fighter. I always looked up to him. I wanted to be strong like him. His expression turned lonely. I don't get to see him anymore, though. Why not? Achi asked. Did he die? No, no, nothing like that. Then did you guys have a fight? Something like that. Daisuke smiled sadly. Yeah, that's, uh, Tateno. He stared at the sky for a while before speaking up again. His name's Tateno. Huh? My friend, that's his name. Ashi's father increased his pace. Come on, he said. We have to go and pick up Suzune. After that, despite Achi's questions, Daisuke would say no more about his old friend. By the time he was almost done with grade school, Achi had grown up fit and strong, almost unrecognizable from his younger self. Perhaps he'd had the physical knack in him all along. He was chosen as the representative for the boys' karate team, even managing to take second place in a national tournament. Nobody bullied Achi anymore. One time, Daisuke suggested the two of them do some sparring. Achi may have been a national competitor, sure, but he was still a grade schooler squaring off against an adult. His father had been training for close to two years now as well, and his confidence had grown accordingly. Achi was excited to be able to face off against his old man. Early on in their karate training, Achi's uh, kumite had seemed rather hopeless. He'd been shocked that his out-of-shape father was able to overpower him, but also pleased to get a sense of how strong the man was. Go, Achi! This time, Achi thought he might as well lose again, but he was going to go all out. He might lose again, but he was going to go all out. As they adopted their fighting stances, Daisuke's face was full of confidence. Have confidence! The instructor gave the signal to begin, and Achi opened with a sharp, low kick. Daisuke didn't guard against it. The blow caught him in the thigh. It looked to Achi like he'd allowed himself to take the hit, not fearing the effect of a child's kick. Achi proceeds to unleash several more low kicks to the same spot. Oh. Ooh. Bit by bit, Daisuke's face revealed his discomfort. Finally, he yanked his leg away. That was when Achi realized his father wasn't letting himself get hit on purpose. He was just unable to keep up with the speed of his son's footwork. If that was the case, Achi felt bad about exploring his dad's weakness. He decided to leave his leg alone. Instead, he aimed a punch at his father's midsection. He was shocked by the impact of the blow struck home. He hadn't attacked with a great deal of force. He just thrown a light midsection punch as a check. Oh. But as Achi pulled back his fist, ISK crumpled to the floor, writhing in pain as he clutched his gut. Achi stared in disbelief at his own hand. No confidence! That was the last day that Daisuke went to the dojo. Your dad's pathetic. Yeah, he's such a loser! Achi was on his way home from practice and some older students from the dojo had started ribbing on him. What did you say? The kids were middle schoolers, but Achi wasn't about to back down. Thrust out with a quick punch, stopping it just short of one boy's nose. Go on, say that again, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> the older boy went pale and took off and ran, but this small victory did nothing to bolster Achi's spirits. His father had looked so small and lonely, heading away after quitting karate. But Achi didn't think about, uh, think there was anything pathetic about that. Sure, maybe by now he's better at karate than his father, but really, what difference did that make? Dang it. And growing stronger, he learned something. Using force to win out over someone else didn't mean anything. Strength alone didn't determine a person's worth. Achi loved and respected his father for going to the dojo with him. Beating him in a karate match didn't change the way he felt. Achi resurfaced from his memories to hear Stanley talking on the phone. I see, so that's what's going on. 
Once we're finished with things in Dogenzak, I'll bring Hidomi right back to the precinct. Curious, Achi turned to the American. Who are you just talking to? Stanley's reply was clipped. That other idiot I was telling you about earlier. <laughs> with that, Stanley proceeded to wrap up his phone call. Guess I'm not going to get much out of this guy, Achi thought. And here we are. By now they could see Endo Electronics up ahead. Achi was about to hurry inside when Stanley stopped him. I'll go in first. You two wait out here. No way, this is my dad we're talking about. You don't think it's dangerous to bring a Tomy right to him? Well, alright. We'll wait here for a bit and once we know it's safe we'll head on in. You cool with that? I'm cool with that. Stanley stepped inside. Achi fussed about impatiently, staring at the entryway. The palm of his clenched fist was sweating. Never before in his life had he wanted to just deck his old man. Tomi watched him uneasily. Hey, Tomi. Yes? I'm sorry. I really don't want you to have to see this, but I think you're about to witness the crowning shame in Endo family history. Achi, don't say that, Tomi said. She squeezed his hand. Ah, don't look! Twitch, don't ban me! Please! I, st I didn't realize this was an M-rated game. He found his other fist unclenching. Please, you have to try to talk to your father. Yeah, yeah, I know. Scandalous, absolutely scandalous. Okay, good. Suddenly there was a loud crash from inside the building. Time for waiting had passed. Let's go! Achi and Tomi raced inside, barging into living quarters without bothering to shed his shoes. He heard his father's voice coming from the workroom. Oof. Dad! Achi heard through the workroom door and saw Stanley holding his father pinned across the desk. Let me go, please, let me go! Daisuke thrashed both of his legs. Stanley, please, let my father go. I want to talk to him. Stanley snorted dismissively, but did, he, did as he was asked. Daisuke stood up, rubbing at a sore wrist. Dad, please, you have to tell me. Where's Maria? Maria? What are you talking about? Daisuke wouldn't meet his eyes. Don't play dumb with me, Achi pointed at Hitomi. You know who this is, don't you? Tomi Osawa, the girl you've been after? Maria's her sister. But Daisuke remained silent. You're gonna pretend you didn't call a hospital? Nothing about may maybe being able to get your hands on a heart? I mean, seriously? It's all so simple. Even I can tell what's been going on. You've been watching me and Hitomi through the surveillance cameras. And you were telling that guy with the cane where we were. The blood began to drain from his father's face. Don't you go quiet on me. If I'm wrong, then go ahead. Tell me the truth. Daisuke's arm shut out suddenly, knocking an external hard drive from his desk onto the floor. It was over and done before Stanley could stop him. Stanley hunched down and picked up the shattered drive. I'm guessing this was, there was important data on here. Footage from the cameras, maybe? I have no idea what you're talking about, Daisuke spat. You can't do this to an innocent person, Dad! Achi shouted, grabbing his father by the collar. There was a sound of footsteps from out in the shop. Someone was quickly getting closer. Stanley grabbed Hitomi by the hand and pulled her back against the wall. Is it Maria? It's gotta be. Achi stiffened as he turned his gaze to the door. No! No, don't do this to me! What do you mean, keep out? Stop it! but we hit a whole bunch of other... What? Where did I miss a jump? Was it, was it here? It wasn't. Maybe it was here. No, we got this jump, right? Question mark? Maybe not. Okay, this is this is where we have to hope the young man could talk him down. Can we jump here? No, we can't. Yeah, we're not up to here yet. Oh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So where the heck, where the heck do we jump from? It's obviously Maria, you can't just end at me. I'm angry. Um, let's see, so yeah, we're stuck over here. We just tried that. Did we do this jump? No. Did, didn't we? Didn't we do this? Yeah, we did. We did do this. We did do this. Cause that's that's this over here. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't help us. Where? What am I missing? Cause we hit it to be continued over there. I feel like that's. Alright. So we we can't we can't do this. Okay, one sec. This is There's that. What am I missing here? Let's see, here's Menorca, right? Right. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we we got this. Okay, one second. This this common name thing here might be. What if I said Endo? Endo! That's weird. That's weird that it does that. I had to do the wrong... The wrong choice there. And I'll have to fix it later. The workroom's door slowly eased open. Ah, she was too shocked for words. The girl who entered looked just like Hitomi. Maria! Hitomi! Achi blinked in bewilderment. It was almost as if Hitomi were standing in front of a mirror. The two girls looked so similar. Maria, thank goodness you're alright. I'm so sorry I had you worried. Mar Maria was safe, Achi realized. At last he had managed to fulfill his duty. You... how did you manage to get out of the storeroom? Daisuke had gone pale. Tell me, Maria said sharply. Who was it who came up with this kidnapping plan? Ooh! Suddenly Daisuke shoved Maria aside and lunged for Hitomi. Stanley moved him to stop him before he could intervene. The older man had to hold on Hitomi, pressing something that looked like a flashlight up against her neck. Oh, this is where we stepped in. Dad! Ashi start, started toward him and Stanley held up a hand. Don't move, that's a stun gun. A piece of self-defense equipment for repelling would-be attackers with an electrical shock. There are several types, including baton-type stun prods and guns that fire needles attached to flexible wires. The latter type especially is frequently referred to in the US as a taser or taser gun, due to the popular models produced by Taser International, now Axon. That's the company name? Really? Okay. Stun guns are used not only by civilians, but also by law enforcement and military personnel for non-lethal applications. If he zaps her in the neck, it could kill her. You know your stuff. You know your stuff, Daisuke said. You deal in American electronics? No, I do this for a living. 
Stanley drew his gun in an instant, taking aim at Daisuke's forehead. Wait, hold on! I, uh, Achi interposed himself between Stanley and his father. That's the second time he used interposed, or maybe the third? Wait, hold on! Dad, let Hitomi go! You need to stop this nonsense! Achi walked slowly towards his father, a pleading look in his eyes. Nonsense? Which one of us is talking nonsense here? You don't know what's going on. If you knew everything, then you'd be helping me. What do you mean, everything? This girl's heart, we can save Suzune. Dad, who was it exactly that told you that? Daisuke did not reply. I asked you a question. Who is it that put this crazy idea into your head? A, a foreign organ trafficker I met at a hospital. In Japan, a medical professional known as the transplant coordinator handles the liaison between the donor and recipient parties, but there are many cases of illegal or borderline illegal activity carried out by third-party organ donor brokers. There are countries where organ transplants are openly performed for monetary gain and no shortage of specialists willing to do the job. These questionable markets include suppliers who, are, who source a viable organs and tissue for transplant from cadavers. Stanley let out a snort. A likely story. <laughs> Alfred! It's true. I was suspicious at first myself, Daisuke said stubbornly, but I couldn't just sit around and wait for Suzune to die. I'm sorry. Hit my desk. After talking to him about a rare blood type and all the difficulties of performing a transplant, he promised he'd do everything in his power. Daisuke's hands were trembling. Tears welled up in his vacant and bloodshot eyes. Then a while later, he got back in touch and told me he found a potential match. Someone with the same blood type as Suzune and roughly the same age. But then he told me that the girl was still alive. And so what was the point? Her heart might be a match for Suzune's, but it didn't matter if we couldn't get our hands on it. And I said that, but then the man told me... He told you what? Haji bit his lip. He told me to abduct her and turn her over to him. After that, he'd find a way to make it all work. At last, Dice Daisuke had confessed. Now Achi had to try to come to grips with the truth he had just heard. I had to do something, his father continued vehemently. I had to abduct this girl and see things through. I just couldn't uh, take it. Katoni had already been taken from me. The thought of losing, losing Suzune, too. I had to make sure I didn't fail. So was this organ trafficker who came up with a kidnapping scheme then, Stanley said. He kept his gun aimed at his target. Daisuke nodded. Describe him for me. He was tall, had black hair, spoke fluent Japanese. Stanley raised an eyebrow at that. Achi wondered if he had some idea who it might be. And taking Maria... I wonder if it's uh, Alcarwan. Taking Maria Osawa hostage in order to lure out Hitomi, that was his idea as well? Yeah, that's right. I allowed his computer to access my surveillance camera system as well. But then, this morning, I got a call from the hospital saying Suzune's condition was critical. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to help my girl right away. And then... Daisuke cut himself off, reaffirming his grip on his stun gun. I was looking at the surveillance monitor. I saw a detective I happened to know. He was right next to his girl here, and so I decided to ask him. I knew if I did, he wouldn't refuse. He could never refuse a request from me. And that was the man with the cane? Aji asked. His voice was low and hoarse. Yes, I was giving him directions while I followed you on the monitors. Dad, you need to let go of Hitomi now. There's no point to this. Aji took another step closer to his father. There is a point if I kill this girl here and now your sister can get the surgery she needs. But even Aji knew that things couldn't possibly work out that way. His father had grown so desperate to help Suzune, he lost all sense of judgment. Why, Achi? Why wouldn't you help me? Don't you want to save Suzune? Daisuke made a pathetic sight. And yet his desperation to save his child was so palpable, it was heartrending. Achi thought back to the time he laid his father out when sparring. No matter how pathetic he may have looked, Achi had always felt that sense of paternal love from him. You're not going to be able to talk him down, Stanley murmured. Ashi shook his head. Stanley, he said, lower your gun. Tears were welling up in his eyes. Please, lower your gun. Hearing the determination in Ashi's voice, Stanley quietly complied. Ashi stepped up to Daisuke, getting a firm grip on his father's slender shoulder. Dad, 
Of course I want to help Suzune. And why are you trying to stop me? Dad, do you think this is what she'd want you to do? Daisuke's face fell. Did Suzune ask for this, Dad? Did she tell you to take someone else's heart so she could live longer? Did she, Dad? Suddenly the fight seemed to ebb from Daisuke's body. The stun gun hung limply in his hand. If Suzune asked asked me to go and get someone's heart for her, I wouldn't object. I'd help her, just like she wanted. I wouldn't let you bear these crumbs by yourself. But that's not what this is, is it? Suzune would never ask us to do something like this, would she? By now, tears were streaming down Achi's cheeks. He knew his father thought about Suzune more than he thought of anyone else, and so he should know full well that she would never want this. Suzune is not like me. She's smart, she's kind, she'd never be happy about taking someone else's heart. Even if it saved her life, I'm sure she'd never accept that. She wouldn't be able to live with it, knowing someone so hor something so horrible had happened to someone else for her sake. We need to call the Phantom Thieves if we need to want to take someone's heart. Isn't that the Suzune we know? Suzune? Daisuke's cheeks were smeared with tears now as well. But then we're not going to be able to help her. The sound of father and son weeping echoed through the workroom. Maybe, maybe so, maybe we won't. But that's better than the misery and suffering she'd have to live with. Daisuke slumped to his knees on the floor, collapsing like a crumbling mound of sand. Hitomi, freed from his grip, stood motionless. There were tears in her eyes, too. You're such an idiot, Dad. Such a complete, utter idiot. Sobbing, Achi embraced his father. There was a sudden thud from near the door. Everyone turned to look. Ah, Murray had crumpled to the floor, and a newcomer had appeared. At some point, Kanan had silently entered the room. Now she cradled Marie in her arms. Standing in the doorway was a man Achi didn't recognize, his face pale. Okay, we'll come back to this jump point. Stay back! Kanan shouted at Achi when he, when he tried to approach. It looked like Marie had fallen unconscious. Oh god, that's right, she has a, a virus that's going to kill all of us. Achi's heart was racing in his chest and eerie sounds fell over the room. For several seconds, no one said a word, their eyes all fixed on Maria. Please don't start coughing. Finally, Kanan looked up, her face ashen. It's starting. Oh no! Don't duck, oh, son of a gosh dang it. I hate you. I hate you, game. I hate you. Alright, uh... Let's do the jump over here. But that's just gonna lead to a... a to be continued on, on our end over here, right? <sighs> every time, every time... Makes me angry to see that to be continued. After the young man's desperate pleading, the other fellow, apparently his father, finally gave in. He released his hold on Hitomi. The tension in the room was replaced by a solemn air of gravitas. Seeing father and son weeping as they spoke made Kano think back to his conversation with Tateno before the stakeout. Was it in people that what was it, what was it in people that drove them to do such horrible things? Sometimes it was the desire to save the ones they loved. Even such a heartfelt human emotion could drive someone to wrongdoing. Why? Why did people have to be like that? Also, Stanley was totally right that Tateno was bad. A sudden thud snapped Kano out of his uh, musing. An instant later, Kanan hurried past him into the workroom. Maria had collapsed on the floor, and now Kanan was beside her. In a panic, Kano rushed to the workroom as well. Stay back! Kanan shouted as the others tried to huddle around the fallen girl. Please don't be what I think this is. Had the virus gone symptomatic? Two hours ago, Stanley told Kano that Maria was infected. He'd also said that her symptoms wouldn't develop for another four hours. Shouldn't they still have two more hours to go? 
Maria looked like she was dead, her eyes closed, her body motionless. Hitomi tried to approach despite Kanan's warning. Maria! She cried. Maria, what's wrong? Kano held his arms wide to hold her back. Your sister has been infected with the Uwa virus. The Uwa virus? Hitomi's face went pale. Hey, Kano said to Kanan, should you really be getting that close if she's developed symptoms? But Kanan didn't move from Maria's side. She calmly rested her, her hand on the other girl's forehead. There's no fever, she said, and there's no blood coming from her ears, no lymph swelling. It'll be alright, she hasn't gone symptomatic yet. In that case, why did she collapse? Hitomi asked. I'm not sure yet. Whatever the case, if we don't get her that antiviral, she's done for. Then we have to get her to the lab right away, Hitomi said. She was trembling with anxiety. No, that's not an option. Kano's tone was grave. You may already be aware, Miss Osawa, but without a password, we can't access the antiviral storage. But when I went there, my father, Mr. Tanaka... But more Tanaka's dead. Murdered. What? She stared at him uncomprehendingly. No. No, that can't be true. He was a member of a crime... He was a member of a crime syndicate. It's possible they killed him in order to silence him. So then, there's no way to save my sister? There was a hollow look in Hatoma's eyes. No, I won't accept that. Why? Why can't we help her? But no one had an answer. Kano gritted his teeth and hung his head. Why did it have to come to this? He'd come this far, but there was nothing he could do, and he hated himself for it. I'll go to the laboratory. Uh, excuse me. It was Kanan. Electronic lock breaking is my specialty. Wait. The young man, Ashi, spoke up suddenly. So you're a martial arts badass, but your specialty is lock breaking? He looked positively, positively dumbstruck. Kanan ignored him, thinking out loud. Brute force. Cryptanalysis technique that involves test input of all theoretically possible patterns. If time were unlimited, this would be the most reliable means of decipherment. However, in practice, the process takes massive amounts of time and computational power, and can be defeated by systems that prohibit access after a limited number of failed input attempts. Side channel. Rather than trying to decipher the password itself, this method involves analyzing information from the device, such as processing time, power consumption, and electromagnetic leaks, and using these details to exploit the system. Isolating the run state of devices is a crucial element of countering side channel attacks. I have no idea what any of that means. Shortcut. A cryptanalysis method that uses mathematical algorithms to carry out efficient bulk calculations against a block cipher that makes use of a shared key for encryption and decryption. Even when such calculations are theoretically possible, however, in practice the process requires large amounts of time and the block cipher is seldom at real risk. Given the situation, I think I have to go with side channel. Side channel? Stanley asked. Where's your equipment? One of the lab PCs will suffice. I can connect to the special server from the net. I don't really understand the stuff you're talking- I don't really understand the stuff you're talking about, Achi said, but I'll trust you to handle this. I mean, you did risk your life to save Atomi from that minivan explosion, after all. Kanan nodded. I have to warn you in advance, though. Cryptanalysis can take hours and still yield no results. I can't guarantee I'll be able to get the doors unlocked before Maria develops symptoms. I understand, Hitomi said. Achi nodded, too. No one present had any objections. All of a sudden, there was a curious sound from somewhere in the room. What's that? Kano asked. What's making that noise? He looked around the workroom. Please don't be a bomb. That's that's my computer. Daisuke hurried to his desktop. The bank of monitors, which had been displaying surveillance camera footage from around Shibuya, had all gone black. What the hell? What's going on, Dad? Achi joined his father, staring at the computer screens. It's all gone. The camera footage has been deleted. Daisuke blinked in disbelief. Now then, it seems our main cast has all been assembled. A man's voice distorted by a voice modulator suddenly emerged from the computer speakers. Uh oh. Uh oh. A moment later, the monitors all began to display a view of the inside of the workroom. Dad, what the hell is this? Someone broke through our firewall. Security system for preventing unauthorized intrusion into a computer network. The term stems from a metaphorical reapplication of the concept of wall meant to inhibit the spread of fire or other destructive forces. They've hijacked the surveillance camera system. The color drained from Daisuke's face as he looked at the screens. Where are they filming us from? 
kind of where are they filming us from? Kind of asks, scanning the outside of the inside of the room. He used the image on the monitors to guess where the camera would be located. Over here. The lens of the camera atop the computer monitor glimmered like an eye. It was a miniature camera used for web conferencing and the like. Now that Maria and Hitomi are both there, you have probably surmised the situation at hand. And so I offer a proposal. The laboratory password in exchange for Hitomi's blood. Realizing now that it's Alfred's voice they were hearing, everyone in the room froze. At 7 o'clock, roughly one hour from now, see that Hitomi Osawa is waiting at the scramble intersection outside Shibuya Station just like this morning. Unless, of course, you're feeling particularly confident. You do have Kanan with you. Perhaps you'd care to take a gamble on her lock-breaking skills instead. Kanan clucked her tongue in frustration. Alfred had known exactly what the plan was. Of course, if Kanan isn't able to get the door open in time, what will you do then? Maria is sure to die, yes. But that's not all. If you don't agree to my offer, I have the means of creating another Maria. And a third. These infectees will spread the virus throughout Tokyo. The death toll will likely number the hundreds of thousands. It's difficult to predict the scope of infection in the event of a bioterrorist attack employing a highly infectious viral agent in a city with a large and mobile population. In a worst-case scenario, some researchers estimate that as many as several million infected in a matter of days. So do think carefully before you decide. Alfred's voice was chillingly matter-of-fact. I'll appreciate- I'll appear at the rendezvous in person. After all, it wouldn't do for the star of the show to miss the final curtain. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you then. Silence fell. Then the images on the com computer monitor returned to normal. The surveillance camera footage came back online as well. Daisuke promptly yanked out his Ethernet cable and slammed his fists on the keyboard. Damn it! There was a hole in the firewall! I'll have to redo my security from the ground up! <laughs> Good call, Kanan said calmly. We can't win if this uh, win this if our intel keeps getting leaked. And Stanley pursed his lips in consternation. What do we do? Kano asked him. Do we give in to his demands? I mean, do we really expect he's just gonna blithely show up like that? He's practically begging for us to come and catch him. There had to be some deeper plan at work. If it means saving my sister, I'll do it. Hitomi was resolute. No, Stanley said you can't. What? Why not? Because if you do, you'll be killed. What? Hitomi's voice caught in her throat. With the antiviral still present in your body, a week after the fact, you're still too much of a liability for Alfred to just let go. He's right. Don't do it, Hachi explained. Hitomi, you can't go. Even still, I, I want to do it. Hitomi stared defiantly at Stanley. You still want to go, even knowing that you'll be killed. I can't just sit here and hope that Kanan is able to pull this off, she said. I want to do something for my sister. I want to save her. She peered down at Maria sprawled out on the floor. She'd object to me going, I'm sure of that, but I want to do what I can, to do things my way. No one tried to contradict her this time. If she's willing to take the risk, then there are things the rest of you can do too. It was Kanan again. Let's hear it, Kano replied. He squared his shoulders. He was of the same mind as Tomi. He couldn't just do nothing and leave it all on Kanan. After everything he'd been through, he wanted to stick with this case until the very end. Apprehend Alfard at the rendezvous and demand the password from him. Kanan offered the suggestion if it were a simple task. That lets you get what you want without putting it to me in danger. Kano let out a sigh. Hold on, he said. Even if we do arrest him, how are we going to get him to cough up the password? We don't have time to drag him off to an interrogation room. Besides, it doesn't strike me as the sort to offer confession that easily. There are ways, Kanan said. Once Alfred has made contact with Atomi, call my cell phone. Hitomi lifted her head. Call you? I have plenty of information Alfred might want to bargain for. I can negotiate with him directly. Kano considered Kanan's proposal. I see. So we'll try both options. Attempt to ha uh, hack the password at the lab and also try negotiating with Alfred. That gives us two chances. The tiny ray of hope Hitomi's face brightened some. We'll split into two groups. One for the lab and one for Shibuya Station, Kanan said. Let's exchange phone numbers so we can be in touch when the time comes. The group quickly shared contact info, info as suggested. Hitomi and Kanan called one another's phones to be sure. Hitomi's cheerful ringtone felt out of place, but also somehow soothing, a fragment of normalcy in the midst of crisis. 
Well, guess we're all set then, Hitomi said, looking down at the LCD screen. Her expression turned apologetic. I'm sorry, Kanan, for having to keep putting things on you. Hey, Kanan replied, don't worry about it. Okay, now I guess I should call my father. Tommy called Kenji Osawa in a cell, asking him to let Marie and Kanan to lab. So that's that's the that's what we needed. Kano leaned in to whisper into Kanan's ear. Are you sure you're okay with this? With what? I know that you're after Alfred. Are you sure you want to go to the lab and not? Right now I want to save Maria. That's all. Her tone was curt and mechanical as ever, but there was a fierce gleam of determination in her eyes. Marie was clearly someone very special to her. All right, Connor replied. Leave, Al leave Alfred to me. He thumped himself on the chest. He succeeded this time, no matter what the odds. Connor could scarcely recall the whirlwind of events that brought him here. He'd somehow survived a dozen disasters. Even now, a dear friend was in the hospital at risk of dying. There were times when he'd been ready to give up, and yet, at the end of it all, here he was. His opponent was an international terrorist. No matter how you looked at it, that wasn't a matchup for a mere detective. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Rumi, Shizuo, Sasayama, Detective Tateno. I'm gonna take down Alfred and save Mario Sao's life. Just you watch and see. And there's a to be continued, isn't it? Eh. <laughs> oh, this game's gonna this game is gonna have a to have a big finale, isn't it? Okay, um, First thing we need to do is fix this. Tanaka, Tanaka! No, no, not that. And that gives us a to be continued there, and let's do the jump over here to our final to be continued of this. Oh god, there's gonna be like another four hours of this game, isn't there? How can it do this to me? How can the game do this to me personally? <laughs> this has been quite a stream. Tanaka hadn't given Aya his password. Sawa's last chance had gone up in smoke. He let a long, shaky breath and shut his eyes tight. Was it true? Was there nothing more he could do? Osawa's cell phone rang. When he saw the name of the incoming call display, he nearly shouted out loud. Oh boy. It was Hitomi. Hitomi? Are you alright? Please tell me you're alright. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. But Maria's... Maria? Is Maria there with you? So his heart leaped. Dad, there isn't any time for me to explain everything, so I'll have to just give you the main points. This is so we can save my sister, so just stay calm and listen. Sawa so struggled to hold back the thousand questions that immediately come boiling into his mind. There's a girl named Kanan who's going to bring Maria to the lab. She's going to try to hack the password in order to get us inside. Wait, hold on. Just what in the world is going on? There are a bunch of people here working to help save Maria. Can you wait for us at the lab, Dad? I'm not sure that electronic lock is something that'll be so easy to- We got another plan in motion, too. If that goes well, we might be able to learn the password. It's all too much to follow, but Usao realized he'd have to take Atome at her word. It was their only hope of saving Maria. Alright, he said, I'll do as you ask. But you said you're trying two approaches. You're not going to be in danger, are you? No, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Okay, very well. I'm heading to the laboratory now. You can't! Well... You can't go. The moment Asawa hung up and started for the house, I clung to him from behind. If you use the antiviral now, everything will go public. There's no way we can keep the virus or the antiviral under wraps at this point. Uh, there's no way we can keep the virus or the antiviral under wraps at this point. Asawa tried to pull free, but his wife was stronger than he expected. Besides, if Maria infects other people, the whole world is going to find out in a matter of hours. No, we can just quarantine her. If it's handled correctly, we'll still be able to retain secrecy. Ai's voice was cold as ice. Do you... do you even have any idea what you're saying right now? I told you, writers are evil. They're very evil. I do, I know how it sounds, but this... This is the only thing, the only thing I can... Her voice trailed off, but she could feel the force of her... Uh, he could feel the force of her trembling where she had held him. Have I really put you into that much of a corner? So I slipped from Ai's arms and prostrated himself on the ground in front of her. I'm sorry. I'm truly, truly sorry. Oh, stop this. Get up. If you're really sorry, then don't go to that lab. Osawa remained silent, his forehead pressed to the dirt. 
If you use that antivirus without corporate approval, your time with Okoshi is finished. That doesn't matter to me anymore. How can you say that? Virology is the only thing you've ever cared about. I began pummeling his back. Maybe virology is all I care about. I don't know the first thing about anything else. I never wanted to know. Never even thought to find out. Never bothered to learn what you or my own children might think. I'm a failure. As a father. As a husband. How dare you say that after a... Oh, only after it's come to this. I struck him again, harder than before. You're right, he gasped out the words between her blows. Maybe this has been too long coming, but it's not too late. I can still start over. Start over? She paused in disbelief. You already turned down that American job. If you use the antiviral now, there won't be any starting over. You'll just lose everything. Will I lose you too? After you've gone and thrown everything else away like this? How could I possibly stay with you? I was sobbing softly now. Sal wondered what her tears were for, but there was one thing he did know. She was right. They couldn't be together anymore. He got to his feet and headed back into the house, leaving Aya behind. He hurried through the back entrance and went into the garage. Climbed into his car, fastened his seatbelt, and took a deep breath. The image of a young Maria rose in the back of his mind. There she was at that park, getting drenched by the rain, holding back her tears as she waited for her father. Wait for me, Maria. This time I'm going to come for you. I was wrong. Going to the lab wouldn't mean losing everything. He let too many important things slip through his fingers. Now it's time to take them back. Saw pulled his car into the street and sped toward the laboratory. As if to signal the long day was drawing to a close, the dazzling sun sank down between the buildings in the distance. No, you can't just end his story too! Don't you and me! We can't just start ending people's stories like this! Sorry, Suzuki. The blue is out now. Mr. Mino, answer me! Go ahead and kill me. 18 to 20?! Down to three people now! Uh, I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. I can't do... I can't do another five hours. I'm so sorry, I can't stream for another five hours. We need to... we need to do this at another time. I need to eat today. Oh my god. We just went through two... this... this five hour and 43 minute stream was the last two... previous two hours of the game. And the final chunk of the game here is a two hour block. Ugh! Okay, we're doing it this week, though. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow. Because I'm really tired. Uh, my best guess is Thursday. So, set down in your calendars, put out a... Put out a... A chunk of time. Perhaps four hours. <laughs> Who knows? Um, 12.30-ish p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, September 1st. Oh, God. This was an experience. I am so... I'm, I'm gonna have to lay down after this, man. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much for watching. This has been... An incredible I'll pick, put a big old banana mark on my calendar. Thank you all for watching. Thank you again, Mr. for the raid. Um, 
thank you very much for showing by for showing by for stopping by uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day an evening and uh, yeah I'll see you I'll see you in a few days <sighs> goodbye everybody bye